So this, this sub, as you sign on the waiver, you say, I understand that this sub has not been inspected or certified by any third party body. It's because things go wrong all the time in this business. The, uh -huh. the time I was there, my dive to the Titanic only lasted 37 feet down, and then it had a mechanical problem and had to be hoisted back onto the ship. Mm. Embark on a thrilling journey into the deep sea where an adventurous expedition to uncover the hidden secrets of the Titanic's wreckage took a disastrous turn. On June 18th, a daring mission was launched to explore the mysterious wonders lurking beneath the waves of the northwestern Atlantic. The Ocean Gate submersible was tasked with plunging into the ocean depths at an impressive rate of 55 meters per minute. However, as it delved deeper, it encountered a massive challenge in the form of tremendous pressure. The submersible's hull fiercely battled against the forces that threatened to crush even the most crucial structures. Plunging to a staggering depth of 3,800 meters, the submersible found itself bearing the colossal weight of 366 Earth atmospheres. Let's ensure everyone has a clear understanding of what implosion truly means, to avoid any confusion. Unlike an explosion that bursts outward, implosion refers to something collapsing inward upon itself. In a matter of milliseconds, the Titan submersible experienced a violent implosion, triggered by the overwhelming hydrostatic pressure of the surrounding water. By examining an authentic transcript of the communication exchanged between the submersible and its surface support vessel, we can retrace the heart-stopping moments that unfolded during this unimaginable catastrophe. Come with us on a captivating journey as we delve into the gripping exchanges documented in this transcript, offering a glimpse into the eerie conversations that unfolded in the depths below. But first, Let's take a moment to explore the nuances between a submersible and a submarine. When it comes to a submersible, it is commonly launched from a larger vessel known as a mothership or home vessel. It is then placed on a platform or raft and submerged into the water for its operations. On the other hand, a submarine has the capability to dive underwater independently, without requiring external equipment. It can resurface using its buoyancy control system allowing for greater autonomy in its movements beneath the waves. Now that we have a clear understanding of the distinctions between a submersible and a submarine, let's direct our attention to a particular submersible known as the Titan Submersible and take a closer look at its specifications. Despite its compact size, the Titan boasts an impressive weight of 9,525 kilograms or 21,000 pounds. In terms of length, it measures approximately 22 feet, which is equivalent to 6.7 meters. Furthermore, the Titan submersible has a width of about 9.2 feet, which is approximately 2.8 meters, and it stands at a height of around 8.3 feet or 2.5 meters. To put its size into perspective, it is considerably smaller compared to an average human. If we were to make a comparison, envision the dimensions of a small SUV to visualize its scale. The remarkable design of the Titan enables it to withstand immense water pressure at depths of up to 3,800 meters which is roughly 12,467 feet below sea level. To provide a visual representation, this depth is equivalent to the weight of the Eiffel Tower pressing down on the submersible. The construction of its hull is specifically engineered to resist these extreme pressures, ensuring its durability in such challenging conditions. To accommodate more passengers, it was specifically designed in a cylindrical shape. It has the capacity to hold up to five individuals, comprising of one pilot and four passengers. However, due to the limited space inside, the passengers are required to sit on the floor during the journey. Addressing a practical necessity, the submersible includes a toilet on board. It is separated from the rest of the capsule by a privacy curtain located at the front, ensuring a level of privacy for the occupants. The pilot of the Titan submersible controls the vessel's movements using a joystick, allowing for forward, backward, and turning maneuvers as required. Two monitors provide crucial visual feedback, aiding in navigation and operation. The interior design of the Titan prioritizes simplicity and functionality, considering the limited space available within the submersible. To enhance structural integrity, a carbon fiber tube was incorporated between two titanium end caps. Carbon fiber is renowned for its exceptional toughness and is commonly used in the construction of airplane wings and racing cars. However, the suitability of carbon fiber for submersibles is also a noteworthy aspect to consider. To unveil the full story, I encourage you to watch the entire video until the end. In the final segment, the defects and events leading to the catastrophic failure will be revealed, shedding light on the sequence of events that unfolded. The expedition starts with the mothership, named the Polar Prince, anchoring at a predetermined location near the wreckage of the Titanic. 
A ramp connected to the mothership is lowered, enabling the gradual descent of the Titan submersible into the water. Upon reaching the desired depth, the submersible separates from the platform and embarks on its exploration mission. To navigate through the demanding underwater terrain, the Titan is equipped with a propulsion system specially designed for such environments. It features four electric thrusters that play a crucial role in steering and maneuvering the submersible. These thrusters enable the Titan to navigate effectively in the depths of the ocean. The Titan submersible features two horizontally positioned thrusters and two vertically positioned thrusters on each side of the vessel. These thrusters enable the submersible to achieve impressive speeds of up to 4,000 meters or 13,000 feet. Despite the challenging conditions of high pressure and density in the deep sea, the Titan can reach speeds of 3 to 4 knots, equivalent to approximately 312 miles per hour. Located at the rear of the submersible, you will find a range of electronic equipment, including oxygen systems and navigation systems. These crucial components ensure the safety and functionality of the submersible during its underwater exploration. The unmanned section of the vessel is equipped with a carbon dioxide recycling system and oxygen generation capabilities. This system ensures a continuous supply of oxygen for the cabin, providing a 96-hour oxygen reserve to sustain the occupants. However, the Titan's voyage to explore the Titanic was marred by a tragic event. While descending into the Titanic wreck, communication with the submersible was abruptly lost. It was later determined that the Titan experienced a catastrophic implosion, an intense collapse inward, attributed to the compromised integrity of the carbon fiber hull. This devastating implosion tragically resulted in the loss of all five passengers aboard the submersible. The key design element of Ocean Gate's Titan submersible was its composite hull, which featured titanium end caps. Composites are materials composed of fibers bound together by a matrix material like epoxy. These composites can exhibit variations in fiber orientation and the presence of voids or unfilled areas, which can impact the structural integrity of the hull. While software simulations can assist in analyzing specific failure modes, real-world testing is crucial to validate and improve these models. Through practical testing, engineers can gain valuable insights into the behavior and performance of the composite hull, allowing them to refine the design and ensure its reliability in the demanding underwater environment. It appears that OceanGate primarily relied on computer modeling without conducting comprehensive physical testing for the Titan submersible. This approach raises concerns, particularly regarding the composite hull's curing process. Without utilizing an autoclave, a pressurized oven that helps eliminate voids in the epoxy resin, there may be a higher likelihood of porosity and defects in the hull. Spencer Composites, the manufacturer responsible for the hull, claimed that the assessed porosity level was less than 1%. However, the lack of specific information about the actual porosity level leaves room for doubt. Despite these potential issues, the Titan submersible stood apart from traditional submarines made of steel or titanium. Instead, the Titan submersible incorporated experimental materials, primarily carbon fibers, in its construction. This utilization of innovative materials aimed to explore their suitability and capabilities in deep-sea environments. You're correct that carbon fibers are lighter compared to titanium or steel. Carbon fiber composites are well known for their strength and tension, which makes them suitable for applications like pressurized aircraft fuselages. In such cases, the pressure inside the fuselage works to expand the circular cross-section, placing the fibers in tension. However, in the case of a submarine, where the pressure acts to compress the hull, the carbon fibers primarily experience compressive forces. The use of carbon fibers in such a high-pressure environment carries certain risks, and their behavior under extreme pressure still requires thorough understanding. Under high-pressure conditions, there is a possibility that the carbon fiber hull may suddenly crack or break, leading to structural failure. The behavior of carbon fibers in these extreme pressure scenarios needs further investigation to ensure their reliability and safety in submarine applications. Rush's justification for the use of carbon fiber in the Titan submersible was based on its superior strength-to-buoyancy ratio compared to titanium. This strength-to-buoyancy ratio is crucial for underwater applications. Neutrally buoyant submarines, such as the Titan, aim to displace water with a weight equivalent to their own, minimizing the energy required for vertical movement. The lighter weight of the carbon fiber composite assists in achieving this neutral buoyancy objective. 
However, the decision to forgo the foam outer layers typically utilized in submarine hulls to achieve buoyancy raises additional concerns. It is essential to carefully monitor the manufacturing process to prevent any potential catastrophic failures. Proper quality control and rigorous inspection during production are vital to ensure the structural integrity and safety of the carbon fiber hull. The choice to exclude foam outer layers, typically found in submarine hulls in the Titan submersible, was attributed to cost considerations, as stated by Ocean Gate CEO Stockton Rush. While cost optimization is not inherently problematic, it raises questions when the structural integrity of the composite material is uncertain. OceanGate's decision not to subject their submersible to regulatory testing further contributes to doubts surrounding their engineering choices. Instead, the submersible utilized a carbon fiber cylinder, a structure that was developed in collaboration with Boeing and has posed its own challenges. The domes of the submersible were constructed using 3.25 inch thick titanium. The carbon fiber, along with a titanium face and interface and the dome, were meticulously assembled with precise tolerances on the surface. Notably, the submersible's design ensured that no pipes, wires, cables, or tubes entered the carbon fiber section. The absence of thorough testing and certification procedures raised legitimate concerns regarding the construction of the Titan submersible. Reports indicated that the carbon fiber used in the Titan was purchased at a discounted price from Boeing because it had exceeded its shelf life for use in airplanes. This decision raised further concerns about potential flaws in the material, which could have contributed to the tragic failure of the Titan. Transitioning from these initial concerns, let us now explore the perspective of the company regarding industry standards. OceanGate, in a blog post that has since been removed, expressed their belief that industry standard classifications, which aim to ensure compliance with accepted standards, did not sufficiently address operational risks. It is worth noting that while many accidents in the marine and aviation industries are attributed to operator error rather than mechanical failure, the absence of rigorous testing and certification procedures increases the likelihood of overlooking potential catastrophic failure modes in the design. However, Despite OceanGate's perspective on industry standards, it is important to acknowledge that there were significant warnings that were overlooked in the case of the Titan submersible. These overlooked warnings may have played a crucial role in the tragic outcome. OceanGate had received warnings that the absence of third-party scrutiny during the development of the vessel could result in significant safety issues. In 2018, a former employee named David Lockridge accused OceanGate of failing to sufficiently check for delaminations and voids which ultimately led to his termination shortly after raising these concerns. Lockridge advocated for non-destructive testing methods, such as ultrasonic scans, but the company rejected these suggestions. OceanGate put forth its own arguments against the warnings raised, primarily centered around the limitations of existing technology. They contended that the available technology for detecting voids and delaminations in a composite of the Titan's thickness was lacking. Instead, they relied on an acoustic monitoring system to predict failure. However, the use of such a system in a carbon fiber composite is inadequate, considering the sudden and catastrophic nature of their failures. The technical arguments put forth by OceanGate do not fully address the specific risks associated with composite materials. It is crucial to recognize that composite materials, such as carbon fiber, can exhibit complex failure mechanisms that may not be adequately detected by traditional monitoring methods. The unique challenges posed by composites require comprehensive testing, analysis, and validation to ensure their structural integrity and safety in high-pressure environments. Indeed, snap buckling or delamination is a significant failure mode that poses risks for composite materials used in deep-sea applications. The Titan submersible was equipped with an acoustic monitoring system designed to detect any abnormal noises produced by the carbon fiber, which could indicate potential failure. However, despite these precautions, tragedy struck during the dive, approximately one hour and 45 minutes into the mission. Regrettably, the submersible did not reach the wreckage of the Titanic. The OceanGate submersible lost contact with the surface, leaving those above with a sinking feeling of dread and uncertainty. After further investigation, it was revealed that the submersible had indeed suffered an implosion, a sudden and catastrophic collapse. While this accident was tragic, it was not entirely unforeseen. The weakened carbon fiber hull of the Titan played a significant role in the implosion. Additionally, the design of the submersible itself contributed to the disaster, primarily due to the increased external pressure it experienced. The design aspect of having a longer cabin space in the submersible resulted in increased pressure on the middle sections. This elevated pressure can lead to more wear and tear on the material and potential separation of its layers. 
The wear and tear can be compared to bending a wire repeatedly until it breaks, while the separation of layers is akin to splitting wood along its grain, which is easier than cutting across it. These factors made the hull more susceptible to failure under the extreme external pressure experienced at the depths of the ocean. This tragic incident brings attention to the construction timeline of the vessel, which is quite notable. The hull of the Titan was constructed in just six weeks, and this time frame is now being investigated as a critical factor in the disaster. It is being questioned whether composite material engineers who possess in-depth knowledge of the properties and limitations of such materials could have predicted this failure. The behavior of carbon fibers under repeated cycles of stress, particularly compressive stress experienced under deep sea pressures, is not well understood. This lack of understanding poses challenges when designing safe hulls based on carbon fibers. The complex nature of carbon fibers response to such extreme conditions makes it difficult to ensure the structural integrity and safety of the hull in deep sea environments. Indeed, the challenge of ensuring the integrity of the Titan's hull becomes evident in this case. The five-inch thick hull of the Titan had been exposed to repeated stress during approximately two dozen previous dives. Each dive subjected the hull to immense pressure, resulting in the formation of tiny cracks in the structure. Initially, these cracks may have been small and undetectable. However, over time, these cracks would have grown rapidly and uncontrollably. This uncontrolled growth of the cracks would eventually compromise the structural integrity of the hull, leading to the catastrophic failure experienced by the Titan submersible. Jasper Graham Jones, an associate professor of mechanical and marine engineering at the University of Plymouth in the United Kingdom, points out the challenge of maintaining the integrity of the hull. To address this problem, non-destructive testing methods like ultrasonic scans are employed. These methods can help identify areas within the structure where the composites may be deteriorating or coming apart. Such testing is crucial for assessing the structural viability of the vessel under stress. The Marine Technology Society, an organization comprised of ocean engineers, technologists, policymakers, and educators, also expressed concerns to OceanGate regarding the size of the Titan, the choice of construction material, and the lack of third-party examination of the prototype. These concerns highlight the importance of thorough evaluation and independent verification in ensuring the safety and reliability of the submersible. Some parties expressed concerns that without a proper certification process, critical safety aspects might be overlooked. However, it is worth noting that not all parties agreed with this perspective. Despite the warnings, OceanGate criticized the third-party certification process, deeming it time-consuming and potentially stifling to innovation. They may have believed that relying on internal testing and evaluations would be sufficient to ensure the safety and reliability of their submersible. It is indeed standard procedure in engineering to seek outside expertise to ensure that vessels conform to the highest industry standards. However, in the case of OceanGate expeditions, there have been reports of mechanical problems and weather-related challenges that led to trip cancellations or delays in recent years, as documented in court records. This highlights the operational difficulties they have faced. Recently, an online transcript of the communications between the OceanGate Titan submarine and its surface support vessel Polar Prince has surfaced. However, the authenticity of this transcript cannot be confirmed, and there is a division of opinions among people. Some believe it to be genuine, while others consider it to be fake. With this context in mind, it becomes necessary to analyze the transcript, examine the details, and determine whether it presents an authentic account of the events. According to the transcript, the Polar Prince initially gives the Titan submersible clearance to begin its descent. The Titan confirms its descent, and everything appears to be proceeding normally at this point. The Polar Prince periodically checks in, requesting updates on the Titan's depth and overall status. However, after approximately 20 minutes, the surface vessel asks the submersible to perform a system check. The submersible confirms that all systems are functioning correctly, and continues its planned descent. It is worth noting that upon examining the descent, an interesting detail emerges. There is a suggestion that the submersible may be descending too quickly, considering the depth it needs to reach and the time it typically takes to descend. According to information provided by James Cameron and OceanGate's website, the expected time to reach the Titanic shipwreck is approximately two and a half hours. Based on this, the average descent speed of the submersible should be around 25.33 meters per minute. However, a potential sign of trouble arises as the Titan reports an alarm from its real-time monitoring system, RTM, and reduces its descent velocity. This draws attention to the descent speed. At this point, the reported depth is 34.33 meters. However, based on calculations, it should be around 22.29 meters. 
This discrepancy indicates that the submersible is approximately 1,200 meters deeper than anticipated, confirming the suspicion that it is descending too quickly. Based on the observed descent speed and the reported depths, it becomes apparent that there is a consistent discrepancy between the actual depths and the expected depths at specific time intervals. This aligns with our earlier observations and calculations, confirming that the submersible is descending too quickly. The severity of the situation becomes more evident when it is realized that the submersible is alarmingly close to the Titanic shipwreck, much earlier than anticipated. The situation takes a further turn for the worse, as the Titan reports that, despite no changes in thrust, the rate of descent is increasing. The submersible also reports multiple attempts to jettison the frame, a slow ascent, and a crackling sound coming from the aft. The real-time monitoring system, RTM, alerts are all red, indicating a severe problem. The Polar Prince, in an attempt to assist, requests updates and engages in discussions with an engineer to address the situation. As the transcript progresses, the Titan continues to report more sounds from the aft and a red reading on the A-Power bus. In response, the crew switches to the B-Power bus as a precautionary measure. The Polar Prince maintains its requests for updates, but the communication from the Titan becomes increasingly sporadic. The final entries from the Polar Prince consist of requests for a response from the Titan, but no further communication from the submersible is recorded. It is disheartening to witness the failure of the real-time monitoring system, which was intended to detect any hull defects before compromising the safety of the crew in this specific disaster. The design choice to make the Titan lighter than the water it displaced, owing to its carbon fiber construction, may have contributed to the disaster. This design could have potentially affected the weight distribution of the submersible, leading to challenges in maneuvering and controlling the vessel's ascent and descent. These observations suggest the possibility of the carbon fiber hull failing under the immense pressure of the deep sea. You are correct. Carbon fiber, despite its strength, can experience catastrophic failure if there are imperfections or flaws in its structure. The reported sound of crackling during the communication could indeed indicate the snapping of fibers under stress, which serves as a clear indication of an impending disaster. It is worth noting that this sound of crackling was not an isolated incident. During a test dive in the Bahamas, an expert audibly heard cracking sounds, which served as an indication of accumulating damage. These instances highlight the potential vulnerability of carbon fiber structures and the need for thorough inspection, testing, and evaluation to ensure their integrity and reliability in high-pressure environments. It is concerning to learn that Stockton Rush chose to disregard the advice of the expert, which underscores a disregard for safety concerns. The escalating alarm evident in the transcript from the submersible paints a grim picture. The crew was well aware of the issues they were facing, but unfortunately they had limited options to address the situation. The absence of further information from the submersible in the final moments only deepens the mystery and tragedy surrounding the event. As speculations arise about the possible causes of the disaster, some suggest compromised power systems as a contributing factor while others point to water leakage into the rear section of the submersible. These theories further highlight the complex nature of the incident and the need for a comprehensive investigation to determine the precise causes of the catastrophic failure. Indeed, while the authenticity of the transcript remains uncertain, it is crucial to await official confirmation and thorough investigations to establish the truth surrounding the events. Regarding OceanGate's decision to use carbon fiber for the Titan submersible instead of traditional materials like steel or titanium, it is a topic open to debate. Some may view it as a bold innovation, driven by the desire to explore new materials and potentially achieve enhanced performance and buoyancy. Others may perceive it as a reckless gamble, considering the uncertainties and risks associated with the behavior of carbon fiber under extreme pressures. Your thoughts and opinions on this matter are valuable, and it is important to engage in discussions that explore different perspectives on the use of materials in high-pressure underwater applications.